Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I think the title of this video will be, Hey, Let's Debate. Well, you know, I, I've watched a lot of debates um, on various subjects on YouTube. And uh, I've learned a lot by watching the debates. Uh, I also said in one of my past videos that I don't think that uh, it's constructive to participate uh, in debate. Um, so on one hand, there's a lot of things I do not like about debates. But on the other hand, by watching them, there's a lot of information that I, I gain. Right? Uh, I gain a lot of knowledge and understanding. So in that way, uh, there is some value. Um, but the problem with a debate is that um, there's a competition attitude and there's um, pressure, stress, and sometimes emotions. And sometimes emotions get out of control. And um, sometimes people say things that... Uh, Either they may regret or at least uh, they they would not uh, be something that Jesus says, thumbs up, well done. Uh, no, uh, I think we're, we're instructed and we're told that we should be ambassadors for Christ. And uh, an ambassador represents a country. And it has a responsibility to do it in a, a dignified way that uh, is uh, uh, is going to make a good impression as they represent the, their country. Well, as ambassadors to Christ, we have a, a duty to represent Jesus, the Bible, Christianity, the gospel. We need to represent in a way that... Um, it's dignified and and it is uh, uh, positive, and that Jesus would could very well say, "Well done, good and faithful servant." Um, so we I think whether we're just making a video or texting or comments or we're on in chat rooms or just talking to friends and family or, or strangers as we witness for Jesus, we just have to always keep that in mind. Uh, I've seen a lot of harm done by uh, people that uh, they, uh, they conduct themselves in such a way that the viewing audience, uh, their conclusion is, wow, if, if that's what a Christian is, if that's how a Christian acts, then I certainly never want to be a Christian. So rather than drawing people to Christ, attracting them to Jesus with the good news and celebrating the love that Jesus has for us, uh, they are not drawing people to Christ, but repelling them. Uh, a lot of harm is done by people uh, behaving in a way that uh, really turns people off. I know it, it happened to me when I was like 10 or 12 years old. Uh, I was at a church and the, the pastor behaved in such a way that I thought I never want to be a Christian. Um, it took many years for me to get over that attitude. Um, but getting back to the idea, uh, the, the value or the lack of value in debating. Um, one of the things that you learn in debate, now I, I've, I've never uh, joined a debate club. I've never been on a debate team. I've never participated in any formal type of debate. Um, but I, I do know a little bit about 
uh, how they are structured and uh, uh, you know the basic format and rules and regulations to follow in the, in the debating. And I know that uh, in a debate class, uh, oftentimes you have a, a side, uh, affirmative or negative or pro or con, and the, 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 a question is asked, and you either support it or, or uh, you're against the, the, the question. So there's two sides to the debate. And in debate class, a person is uh, told that they will take a particular side. And then it may not be the, the side that they actually believe in or agree with. You're just, you're assigned, you're on the affirmative side. Well, I don't agree with that. How can I do? No, you need to, you need to represent the affirmative side. And so study their positions and represent it the best way you possibly can. Uh, and, and, and then maybe next time we'll have you represent the, the negative side the, the, uh, of the same issue. And in that way, a person actually will learn both sides of an argument, both sides of an issue. And in that way, a person is uh, much better off in, in, in that they've gained so much knowledge and understanding of both sides. And by doing that, sometimes uh, you might be actually surprised that your, your original position has changed because you've learned both sides of it. Finally, now, now you're in a better place to judge which side that is correct. Uh, I think that's, the, uh, that's a healthy attitude. That's an attitude that uh, I've tried to adopt, particularly over the last few years, but I, I think this started for me when uh, I had some friends and, and brothers in, in Christ who uh, held different positions than me. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. One of them believed that uh, eternal torment in hell was wrong. And they believed that uh, in conditional immortality and, and uh, the annihilation of body and soul, and um, I held to the traditional position. Um, but because I was willing to listen and, and argue back and forth and debate, and, but I was willing to listen, eventually they won me over to the other side. Uh, once I was convinced, um, I willingly um, and even happily uh, switch sides of, of that argument uh, because I was certainly not going to be a stubborn fool holding on to a position that's been proven wrong. I hope you would never do that. But how, how can you be proven wrong and be corrected if you're unwilling to even listen to the other side? You, you know, you don't have ears to hear. Don't show me any facts. So with that kind of attitude, uh, you remain ignorant. Now, ignorant, a lot of times people, when we use the word ignorant to describe someone, uh, people would normally be offended. Um, but I will tell you this, that you who are watching right now, you are ignorant of 99.9% .9 of all the information in the world. I mean, the information that you actually have, the knowledge that you've acquired in your life, it's less than 1% of nothing compared to all of the information that exists in, in and of and about the universe. Uh, Einstein said, we don't even know 1% of nothing. So all of us are extremely ignorant. I am certainly ignorant. There are some subjects I know nothing about. Other subjects I know very little about. Other subjects I've studied and learned a lot, but I still am somewhat ignorant because there's so much more to learn. So you should not be offended by being ignorant. Uh, what you should be offended by uh, in yourself, I mean, you should examine your own attitude. And if you have the attitude that I don't even want to hear the other side, then I say you should be ashamed and embarrassed 
uh, because that is not a healthy attitude. That is the way that you remain ignorant instead of becoming enlightened. Um, so I would say that uh, conducting um, uh, debates, even if they are uh, they follow a, a strict set of rules, they're very organized, and even if they're conducted in a way that's very respectful, uh, the, the problem with it is that egos are involved. Uh, I've never once seen any debate, and I've watched many of them on YouTube. I've watched many hours of debates. Uh, almost all of these debates have been on uh, Christian subjects. But uh, in these debates, I've never once seen anybody's position change during the debate or as a result of, of, after the debate is con concluded. Never have I seen a mind, mind changed. However, the people who watch the debate later, if they have the right attitude, perhaps their mind was changed by watching it. So, um, and I think that's because sometimes people's positions are that they hold, they've invested so much in their position. Particularly if someone is, is uh, let's say, they have their, their PhDs, they've written their books, they have a vast audience uh, on the internet or TV or radio or, or a large church congregation, and they've taken a position and they've held this position and been a champion of the position for many years. They, there's a lot of pressure on them to keep that position. If they change their position and recant and switch, uh, it could cost them a lot. Maybe it could cost them everything. Uh, but the question is, uh, will you insist on remaining ignorant by not listening to the other side? Or will you listen? And then when you listen and actually be, give the other side a fair hearing, not just listen to the words, but actually think and consider them honestly, could that possibly be true? Instead of just thinking of your argument against it, actually consider it. If you do that, then if you realize that, wait a second, the other side of the argument makes more sense than the position I hold. Uh, could you change your mind? Could you recant and change your positions? I did that when, when my friend uh, Tony uh, convinced me to change my mind about eternal torment. I did that with uh, a, a YouTuber that he used to have a lot of fellowship and interaction with, and he uh, taught me some things about the book of James that were totally foreign to me. And uh, after listening to him, and because I loved and respected him, I was willing to actually listen and consider. And then I did much more independent study on the subject, and I ended up changing sides. And if you don't know my position on James, I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of materials. The, the, the study I just completed on the book of Galatians, a verse-by-verse -verse commentary, the, uh, the playlist I have, uh, James and Paul, the shocking facts, uh, the, the, the study I did, uh, the book of Acts, a verse-by-verse -verse commentary. In all of these and more, uh, playlist. Uh, I've certainly been very, very thorough telling you how I understand the book of James and, and how it's, it, it, its role and position in the Bible now. Um, but my mind was changed because I was willing to listen to the other side. So uh, the title of the video is uh, Hey, let's debate, but I don't really want to debate you. But I want you to adopt the attitude that uh, all the positions that you hold and that you've held maybe for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, some of these positions, like on James and Eternal Torment, for example, for me, I held those positions for 25 years. I defended those positions, the traditional positions. I defended them. And I could defend them as well as you or anybody else. I knew all the proper answers. Um, so, uh, 
And yet, once I listened to the other side and was swayed and won over to the other side, uh, I was willing to publicly recant and say, I was wrong. I had a lot of videos on the book of James that were uh, alike, like yours, like all the people who try to make sense of the book of James and say that it, uh, it's, uh, uh, there's no contradiction mm -hmm. with Paul. There's no disagreement with Paul in the book of James is, is what they say. And this is how you should understand it. This is how James, how you should interpret the James. And uh, I, I had five or six videos on James taking the same positions that many of you are, are promoting, uh, that are using to try to make sense of James, to try to make James conform to the gospel. Uh, so it's not that I don't know those things. It, I, I, I knew it as well as anybody else and I used those arguments uh, for 25 years. But once I realized I was wrong, uh, I'm not too proud that I'm going to just defiantly hold on to my position. Once I know in my mind, in my heart, I was wrong, I will admit it publicly. So the, really the point of this video is kind of like the playlist I have on dogmatists. Uh, many times people, uh, they have a theological position and they, uh, they won't listen to any other sides of the argument. I had one guy, when I had a, uh, like a, a home Bible study, it turned into a home church for about seven years at my house. And, um, uh, when the subject of hell was brought up and my friend Tony was telling us about this other way of understanding uh, the state of, of the, the lost, the eternal state of the lost. What is the eternal state of the lost? Uh, we, uh, I was willing to listen, but the other person in the group that was street preaching with me, uh, you should have seen the reaction he had when Tony started talking about uh, no, the lost are not tormented forever, they perish. T uh, Frank, he would actually start like, you see him like, fidgeting around the chair, and then you'd see his knee, like, his legs start, start twitching really nervously, and you could see his body reacting. And he, he had literally a, quote, knee-jerk reaction. His knee was jerking, and he was stressed out just even listening to the other, a different viewpoint. He was so disturbed by it. He couldn't stand to even hear it. And there's something wrong if a person can't even listen to something, even if they think it's wrong, even if they think it's heretical. You should be willing to listen and, and then uh, and then really be fair. And as I said, you don't just listen just like not talking uh, while your mind is thinking about all the arguments against it all the time. You're not really considering what they're saying. You're thinking about what you're going to say to refute it. No, actually be fair and listen and consider. Um, so uh, with uh, Eternal Torment and, and with the Book of James, because um, people I knew and respected and loved had a different viewpoint and I was willing to listen to them. And I, I didn't change my mind on those positions. Uh, the first time the subject came up. Uh, no, uh, not even the second time. Many, it, it took many discussions, uh, many hours, even mo more than a year. It took more than a year or two continually going, discussing the subject before they finally won me over. So, um, the, the problem with these formal debates is that the egos are involved and no one wants to admit that, well, I know you've proven me wrong, so I'm changing my mind. No, their pride won't allow them to, to do that. Uh, and then emotions get involved and then sometimes people say things that they shouldn't have said. Uh, that's what I don't like about debates. But what I do like about the exchanging of ideas is, is uh, that uh, you learn new things. And even if 
your mind is not changed, you haven't lost anything. You've gained a better understanding of someone else's point of view. That can do no harm. I can only help you. But that, and I consider that a great virtue. And I'm happy to say, I have that virtue. I've proven it. And I, I hope you will, if you don't naturally have that attitude, I hope you will train yourself to do that. And, and one way that I would recommend and hope that you could exercise this new way of thinking is any of the subjects on, on my channel that are uh, subjects that are and the positions I take that are different than the ones you hold. Watch the playlist. Think about it. Actually pause and take notes and consider it and, and be fair and listen so you can understand my point of view. If you do that, something might happen. Like maybe, maybe you'll say, wow, now that I'm actually listening and understand this, the other side of this argument, uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And maybe you'll change your mind. Maybe you will not be full of so much pride that you have to stubbornly hold on to your position because you can't admit that you were wrong. Uh, or maybe after you are fair and listen to the playlists, listen to the other side of the, the argument, then uh, maybe you won't change your mind, but you've at least gained a, a better understanding. So that's what, oh, by the way, I, uh, I didn't comb my hair today. So I'm wearing this hat to cover up my bad hair but it gives us a chance to talk about the cross. The cross. That's what made it all possible. Without that cross, without Jesus' death for our sins, uh, we'd all be lost. The cross is what um, makes salvation possible. And faith in Jesus is, is what uh, makes it happen relying completely on Jesus for your salvation, knowing that he paid for your sins, now you have access to God. There's no barrier. The sin barrier was removed. So now you're free to come to God, get recon reconciled and uh, through faith in Jesus and, and receive the gift of eternal life. Um, oh, I guess I'll tell you this too, that... Uh, um, in one of the recent videos I made, I was talking about life being a, a series of problems to be solved. And I said, it's like standing on a beach, knee deep in water, and the waves come in strong enough to just knock you down. And the, way, the, the, the wave recedes and you, you stand up and you brace yourself again, because certainly we know that there's another wave coming. And that's, that's how I see life. It's a series of problems, one after another throughout your life. And the problems, though, are opportunities to learn and grow. How do you deal with these problems? Um, uh, so problems, uh, dealing with problems is the one way that you develop a character, but also how you deal with the problems also reveals what your character is. So um, and the reason I'm bringing it up now is because I just had another wave hit me yesterday and that uh, we were in a, a, an accident. My wife has to drive now because after my heart surgery, I'm not allowed to drive uh, and I have to sit in the back seat uh, because uh, if the airbags go off, and hit me in the chest, it could damage the, 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 the surgery, the open heart surgery I had. So I have to ride in the back seat and my wife's been chauffeuring me. And, uh, but um, we didn't have a collision, but she hit a really bad hole in the ground or something and it caused the car to be damaged. The car's totaled, absolutely totaled. The engine is frozen and ruined now. So that's another problem. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll solve the problem. 
But sure enough, I know next week, next month, next year, there's going to be another problem because that's what life is. Uh, and uh, not that I want to have problems so that my character gets further developed, <laughs> but but uh, it's inescapable. Uh, we can't avoid it. And uh, it, it will tell us a lot about you and, and me is, is how we cope with these problems. Okay, so the final conclusion of this uh, video is, no, I don't want to have a debate with you. But I think we can accomplish the same thing. Is if, if you disagree with me, I, I like to watch your videos. I want to watch the videos of the people who disagree because I, I, I learn the other side of the argument. And sometimes after I study the other side, I switch sides. Can you do the same thing? Are you willing to watch my videos on subjects, various playlists? Go Just go through all my playlists. If you find a subject that is, uh, oh, I didn't know that's what he thought. That's different. Uh, wow, I'm shocked. I didn't know he believed in that. Well, don't just stop there. Watch all the videos on the playlist and learn something. Learn something. Don't remain ignorant. And then once you've learned it, you can say, well, look, I, I watched, I listened carefully, I honestly considered it, and I still think you're wrong. Or maybe you'll make a comment and say, hey, I didn't realize that. I've learned a lot, and now I agree with you. <laughs> Either way, I hope you will uh, at least uh, be fair to yourself uh, and, and be willing to learn the other side of these arguments. When I say argument, I, argument also has a bad connotation. It sounds like there's anger involved, but I'm just talking about disagreements on a subject like um, uh, when attorneys are in a courtroom, they say the attorney is arguing, but he's not raising his voice and screaming and angry necessarily. Usually they're not. It's just that he's presenting his arguments to support his side. So it's good, it's good to argue. I even have a video. Arguing is good. Because by arguing, we we can hash things out and try to try to get to the bottom of something and, and uh, learn the truth. Thank you for watching. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.